we do not decide like as the professionals to do the data collection. It has to be a need that is brought about by the federation or the communities facing a particular issue. And from my experience, what I've seen is uh, it's either communities want to collect data because they are facing an eviction or they want to collect data to improve their services, to lobby for services, advocate for better services, or to get uh, security of tenure as, as a community. So from there on, if they, they'll approach us and we will help them to mobilize the community, we'll do a lot of, uh, teach them how to do like sensitization, or they'll sensitize the rest of the community, tell them about what is going to happen. And then after that, we tell them to select a group they think is competent enough to carry out data collection. And in competency, it's not just about reading and writing, but it's also about the commitment one has with the community, the connection they have. So you might find very old women being part of the enumeration team, and you'd wonder why they're there, but they have specific roles. They'll help with the monitoring, they'll help with the carrying of stationery, they'll help with the talking with the community so that households agree to be enumerated. At times it might be difficult, one or two cases, when people don't understand why you're collecting the data. So from the beginning it should be very clear the community should have done proper, the community leadership or team that you're selected should have done proper sensitization so that when you go to the household level you face as little resistance as possible. But resistance will always be there. We organize the settlements into clusters. So if you're from a particular cluster, you're the one sensitizing in that area, collecting data in that area. So people around there know you, if you are a resident there. But if you get somebody from outside, it would be the opposite. They'd resist collecting uh, their data being collected because they view that person with suspicion. So the importance of also ensuring data collection is done by the people living in that settlement and not outsiders or students so or professionals. For us, we sort of play a supervisory role at the top and the training part. And then at the end of every day, we would collect the forms and there's a team from the community that checks the quality of data that has been collected when we were using the forms. And they would sign against the form and say the quality is good and then uh, a federation member who's supporting that community in collecting data would also sign against the form to see the quality is right and if the quality is wrong is not right or it's poor then it would mean that enumerator would have to go back to the same household with the supervision of the federation member to collect the right information <laughs> i've been involved in enumerating like over 100,000 households so far. Yeah, so we would start with inventories. We used to call them, the profiles used to be called inventories. Just trying to, it was a rough estimation of what is happening in settlements, but we would cover a large, a large scale because it wasn't very detailed, unlike the enumeration. It was just settlement-based questionnaire. It was a settlement-based questionnaire with estimates of population, structures, uh, facilities, we never did the actual counts initially. Then we would use enumeration to get the actual data of households when we needed population, the, the actual structure size and such things. But with time, we've seen it's costly to do the enumeration, which is more accurate. It's a bit costly. So what we've done is uh, we've, we've started doing profiles. We've improved on there questionnaire we used to use for settlements. So now, right now, we are doing the actual count. Even though we are doing it at settlement levels, we are actually counting like structures and families to sort of give us a citywide scale of how many people would be living in informal settlements in, let's say, Nairobi. We want to know that level of detail. Right now, our priority for enumeration is only when we have a project we want to implement that involves like individual households, like let's say a housing project where you need the names of the beneficiaries, you need their contacts, you need the actual names of the children, or such kind of a thing. So with time we've sort of changed the mode of data collection 
so we are still improving but i i think it's really changed yeah it's it's much better it's much <laughs> efficient like before we'd have um like 80 people carrying out an enumeration of 2000 households so it was very hard uh, to manage such a big enumeration team on a daily basis checking the quality it used to be a challenge and we do like in three days 80 people 2000 households and it was kind of crazy when you do the math and all so with time we've realized yes use a smaller team that will understand and when you have that close connection with the enumerators it's easy to know their level of understanding and like you have such a big group we've also now moved from the hard copy forms now we're using the tablets <laughs> so that's an improvement from where we were to now which makes it easier to monitor where the enumerators are and even the kind of information they're feeling and it's faster 